Hi, everyone. I am Arseni, uh, and um, the CTO and co-founder of GIQ. And today, I would like to talk about uh, how can the voice and AI can be used in the business. And let me start uh, my pitch from a story of my company. So I, with my partner, decided to make our first voice bot five years ago. And this was the voice bot for Pizzeria. And a friend of mine uh, agreed to make the pilot, and the name of his pizzeria was Fortune. And I thought it was a real fortune for us to make a pilot in such a pizzeria. And we actually, the idea was to make a multifunctional voice bot that can take uh, orders in pizzerias, cafes, and um, restaurants. And uh, the place where I lived, uh, used to live, there were about 50,000 of those. So we uh, were going to enter a big market. And we really did the bot, the voice bot that could take uh, orders in cafes. And the caller can uh, uh, select the right pizzeria, the filler, the crust, uh, and the bot can even suggest some uh, drinks. Uh, and we even uh, trained him to understand the Chinese and uh, um, Japanese names of the dishes. But we completely failed in scaling this project. People simply refused to speak with the voice bot. And um, actually, we even uh, offered them an extra pizza in case they make an order uh, via our voice assistant. But nothing happened, nothing changed. The people still refused to use the voice bot. So, and you ask why? And the reasons were quite obvious, actually. Um, the first thing was that the voice was very unnatural. The second, that the pauses uh, were too long. And the third thing is that the voice bot could hardly understand long spoken sentences. And the last one, that the voice bot could not be interrupted while he speaks. So there was a long way to improve, but we didn't give up because we loved our pro uh, uh, product and believed in it. So we focused on our development and uh, our focus was to make the such a voice bot would be very human-like, so the people would not hardly understand that they're speaking with the, boss, uh, with the bot. So the first thing that we do, started to develop is the um, speech synthesis model uh, to be able to make a digital copy of any voice. We also made our own dialect manager for conversational logic. We also made our own NLU module to understand the spoken language. We even uh, done such models like voice activity detection to filter some um, noises and distortions that are specific for telephonic channel. And uh, such a model like uh, automatic um, voice machine detection, not to speak with the voicemail. So we, and eventually, we ended up with a platform where people with no uh, coding or technical background can easily assemble the voice board for different purposes. And um, for now, we can make linear and non-linear dialogues, and uh, people hardly ever understand that they're speaking with the bot. Well, uh, actually, by 2020, we were able to proceed to handle about 1K um, dialogues per day. And this 1,000 dialogues per day uh, would save about um, a monthly cost of three or even five live agents. And the volumes became growing, and by 2022, we were able to process uh, one million calls per day. So in 2022, we processed about 1,064 million calls, and uh, the most, um, um, uh, so the cases that we use mostly, this is the, uh, for inbound calls where we can replace the touchstone AVR, and for outbound campaigns, these boards are for NPS, uh, for uh, upsales, uh, for, uh, for some surveys, for some reminders about delivery, and uh, doctor appointments, and many, many more. Actually, um, uh, our experience and expertise uh, take us to the new innovation and uh, give us a chance to uh, extend the line of voice assistance. And as you noticed, so the voice assistants for handling inbound and unbound calls are our flagship. 
but this is not all. Um, uh, actually, above the um, already mentioned uh, advantages, um, the JQ platform can also be installed uh, on-premise, and this can be uh, important for such companies like banks and telecoms uh, to keep their sensitive data inside the organization. Uh, actually, the voice assistants for inbound and un unbound calls are a good fit for big companies which have great uh, volume of mass communications. And uh, uh, actually, the primary customers here are banks, telecom companies, um, some uh, retail chains, and outsourced uh, call centers. But actually, we also have done um, a project for... Uh, oh, here is the a case from our uh, one of our telecom clients and as you see so they're using their voice boards for already two years and um, by using our technology they managed to increase the customer reach by 312 percent and this gave them the increase in telecom revenue by uh, 39 percent and um, so this is a real case uh, and we're still working with this customer Actually, we also done the product for small and medium uh, business, and this is the voice mail manager. So this is the product to replace the convenient voice voicemail. So this is the assistant that will never miss a call when you are unavailable. And um, uh, so this assistant can take a call, understand who is calling, classify the call, is this a delivery or some potential lead or somebody from your family, it can also make a summary of this call and send it to different channels. And um, it calls, uh, this assistant can also understand if there is any uh, um, back call is needed and what is the best time for it. So uh, this uh, assistant throws uh, um, uh, a challenge to conventional uh, receptionist uh, uh, services and uh, we think that will be uh, quite popular in UK. Um, Actually, these two products uh, were about the calls, inbound, outbound, and even missed calls. But actually, the voice communications can be held in different uh, uh, channels. Uh, so we did ch uh, voice assistance in different channels too. So, and that is why we are uh, developing our new product that is called Mobile Video Assistant. And uh, Hi, I am JIQ Video Assistant. I am a successful promoter, consultant, and support for your customers online. I am very good at understanding natural speech. I am never tired and work 24-7. I can be based in cloud or on-premise, so to say, from home or in office. I hope you like me, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Well, actually, this is a mobile video assistant that can be easily launched in your uh, uh, web browser without any additional apps installed. And uh, the, um, this is a new way of communication where people can spoke with a voice assistant uh, like in a video chat. And actually, video chat engages uh, the user much better than chatbots does. And uh, the uh, application of this uh, vi mobile video system can vary. Uh, actually, the most cases are uh, answers for frequently asked questions, for making some surveys, or for making some um, so making some uh, onboarding. Uh, via this uh, mobile video assistant, you can e also do some purchases on your website. As far as this mobile assistant can navigate you on the page by scrolling it up and down, depending on the stage of the dialogue, on the question that the user asks. So we can uh, show you the, um, re the relevant uh, part of the page. So. Um, and finally, our, uh, uh, another, uh, our another product is the assistant for web conferences. Uh, just imagine how much time do you spend uh, on online meetings and how, much, how often do you miss something important on these meetings and how much time does it take from you to take meeting notes after each meeting. So uh, to tackle these challenges, we've made uh, a JQ Web Conference Assistant that can, uh, that is, that which aim is to uh, make structured summary and send it to all the participants 
exactly after the end of the meeting. The idea behind this uh, assistant is not to record the whole meeting, like many others do. No, this assistant can be um, activated by voice when it's necessary, then it starts transcribes your speech, automatically uh, breaking it down to tasks with uh, dates and responsible people. So at the end of the meeting, you will receive the structured summary where you can uh, uh, fix all the important things that were done during these uh, online meetings. So it's a very uh, uh, good tool to structure your day-to-day -day communications. So uh, to sum up, uh, um, so increasing revenue, cost costs are quite um, complex tasks. So business still need to uh, uh, enrich the uh, customers to uh, cost, uh, cost, uh, to, cut, uh, to uh, cut the costs on first line resolution. And um, um, I think that uh, the only way to thrive on this uh, market is to try new uh, uh, technologies and uh, whoever uh, need, once intends to try JQ uh, solutions, please uh, uh, approach me on the booth. Thank you very much. Uh, we have time for some questions, anybody? Well, thank you very much for that. This looks brilliant, and I'd love to have a demo if uh, that's uh, available. Um, I'm much more into personas, so this might be a little bit of an off question, but how do your customers respond to your semi-digital human-looking avatar? Um, what do they think of it? Well, actually, for some applications, it's quite useful because uh, they j just speaking like with the, so for customer support, for example. Mm. So we can ask some questions and g get a uh, quick uh, uh, response, and uh, you're look speaking with the like, like with the customer service. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but it feels human. It talks human. It looks like a human, but it's not entirely human. Have you had had any any actual customer responses to that? Uh, <laughs> what I can say that the customers use it and they became quite positive. So the That's user good. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, sorry. Uh, if there's no other questions, then I'll, I'll follow up on that one. So there, there there's a. Uh, there's known events in virtual reality that as the more realistic you get uh, with visuals, the more people uh, lose engagement with like minor, minor details. So have you found that there's an ideal level of abstraction that, um, on the other hand, that's visual. With sound, just the better you get, the better you get. There's no, there's no such disengagement problem. So have you found any, have you played around with this at all? Have you ever found that there was a point where you were backing off and or or just that every time you can improve it, that's just that's wonderful. Well, uh, we actually uh, meet the, meet some problems with with this, of course, and uh, I think this is all about the case that we, uh, where we use it. So, if a person needs some help and uh, some help immediately, so this solution can help him, and so some uh, additional vi visual effects will make it more gamifying, actually. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Anyone else? We've got a lot of time for questions, so. Um, when you talked about the pizzeria uh, scenario, yeah. you mentioned that even uh, incentivizing didn't get customers to take part. Uh, have you noticed the difference? Uh, obviously, there's. It's been, I think it was five years ago. Um, uh, do you still try incentivizing, or is the customer adoption rate in, in each market growing? Um, Can you please repeat that? <laughs> um, the, uh, to improve the customer adoption rate of the voice AI, um, yeah. do you still incentivize, or uh, so offering the free pizza? No, uh, we actually no, uh, don't have such a product. Uh, <laughs> I, I, and I, I will explain to you why. Actually, uh, this is a very tricky question, actually. Thank you for, for this. Um, our experience shows that uh, using voice bots um, can be profitable 
only when uh, the um, profit from the voice bot is much more than potential lose. And uh, in case if you uh, get take an order in a pizza, I think that the average cost of an order will be uh, 20, 20 pounds, for example. But the cost of this uh, uh, bot is uh, one pound. So your potential lose is much more than potential profit. And, uh, and that is why, so you, uh, we, uh, after this case, <laughs> we did understand that. And uh, if a customer comes us, uh, to us and asks to make a case, we, f the first thing that we do is that we uh, 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 make the economics. So, so we count uh, if it can be profitable for, for the client. And if we see that uh, the potential uh, lost can be more, we say that it's not a proper way. So that is why we don't take orders by both, actually. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Hi, uh, thank you for the <laughs> for the speech. It was, it was very very interesting. I have a question related to what she asked first about the humanization of the bots. When you said first that one of the first things that you noticed that went, went wrong was that the bots were really really human and that uh, scared uh, customers. How did you find the balance? Because that's one thing that. Uh, I think that we need to be very careful right now with the digital humans and such. Uh, how did you, what did you do to, to find the balance uh, between, between humanization and robotization? Because to this day, I, have, I still have clients that really want to make the user feel that they are speaking with a person and not a robot, and, that, and so the user doesn't know that they are speaking to, with a robot. And I still find it difficult to make them understand this point that you made, that it scares them? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, uh, we see that um, there are two types of uh, voice assistants, the two applications. The first one is the inbound, and when, uh, so it, it can also be in the mobile video system the same way. So when you, when you try to sell something, and when, when you, you need something from the client, and there is a um, vice versa case when the client needs something from you, so this is like the first support. So, and uh, when you do the bots uh, when you are selling, uh, by phone for example, you need to make the bots as human as, as it can be. So because if the, uh, uh, the person understands that he is speaking with the bot, he will never buy anything. So uh, this is why for, uh, when, we, when we make uh, the outbound calls, so we make very human-like uh, sound, and we add some noises, we add some uh, uh, mistakes in the speech to be very, very uh, human-like. But when we do the bots for uh, first line, so uh, the idea that, that if it's um, intelligent enough, the person doesn't care is it a bot or it's a, it's a human. He needs the uh, response for this response for his problem so and in these applications we do more emphasis on the intelligence on the uh, integrations with some backstage uh, systems so this is the balance so different applications different balance yeah anyone else um Hi, thank you. Thank you for the uh, speech. I was just going to follow on that, as you just said. So the, in the unbound calls, you make even mistakes and noises, right? Yeah. Um, do you, the, like, do you um, inform the users that they are speaking with a virtual yeah. assistant, or is it something that you don't um, Well, there inform? are different... Uh, uh, customers with different requests, actually. And so some of them uh, wants that, uh, so the bot would not say immediately that he, it is a bot. But if a customer asks, am I speaking with a bot? Uh, so we usually, of course, say that, yes, I'm a virtual assistant, uh, but I'm quite intelligent, so we can make a talk. Um, and some of the customers, they have a strict policy, so uh, they uh, make a script where the, uh, the assistant uh, from the very beginning, say this is a virtual. Uh, this is a call from a virtual assistant. We'd like to make this and this. So, of, again, uh, we have different 
approaches for different customers. Yeah. I think that's all we have time for. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank so you much, much for your work. Yeah.